Today's Mass we're offering for the repose of the soul of Roger Gunling. Mr. Gunling owned Gunling Concrete, and that was the very first job I ever held, was working at Gunling Concrete, and I have many wonderful memories of working at Gunling Concrete and some great stories that I remember. I remember one time that Mr. Gunling dropped a very expensive hammer in between the forms of, a, 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 of a, a foundation that was going to be poured, and so he didn't want to lose that hammer at the bottom of the forms, so they tied rope to the both of my feet and they lowered me between the concrete forms head first so that I could reach down and grab his hammer while they were pouring concrete into the forms. Skinny old me was able to fit through the forms and get that hammer. But then some of the memories that I have, oh, one time was I sick. I mean, I was uncontrollably sick. In fact, I was so sick, I even ended up in the hospital as they tried to figure out what was wrong with me, and then they found out what was wrong with me. I didn't listen to my mother. Well, how did that make me sick? Well, mom had told me that I needed to put my lunch in a cooler with ice so that I didn't get food poisoning. And did I listen to my mom? Absolutely not at all. I took a wonderful smoke-a-butt sandwich with mayonnaise to my job at Gunling Concrete, and I let that delicious smoke-a-butt sandwich with the mayonnaise stay in the hot car all morning. And then I ate it for lunch, and I ended up with food poisoning. So bad so bad, I ended up in the hospital because I almost died. I came to learn something really important, you know, that my parents are actually right every once in a while. What is it that we, we rebel, that we think that all these rules that our parents have for us are unfair? Isn't that what we were listening to in the first reading from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 25 to 26, where we hear you say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair? Are not your ways unfair? When the just turn away from justice and do evil and die, on account of the evil they did, they did, they must die. So why would we sometimes think that the rules our parents want us to live by are unfair? And that's something for us to reflect on now. Are there times where we have thought that, you know, the rules of those who love us the rules of those who want what are best for us, why sometimes do we rebel and think they're unfair? Because we heard from the prophet Ezekiel, sometimes in doing that, we'll die. And so we need to reflect on how do we respect and live the rules, the guidelines, not just of others, not just our parents, but of God. And in doing that, it's quite humbling. We need to recognize that there are times where people do know better than we do. There are times where people do have our best interest in mind, and we need to humble ourselves and recognize the importance of what they have to say. That's what St. Paul was saying in our second reading from the, his letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 3 through 4. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interest, but also for those of others. When we respect our parents' wishes, how does that show Christ we regard others as more important than ourselves? How do we regard others? Because that's what St. Paul was challenging the Philippians to reflect on, and he was using Jesus Christ as an example of someone who regarded others with such love and goodness that he was willing to sacrifice himself for others. 
Because the reality is, when we don't humble ourselves and recognize how important others are, we fail ourselves. Because it always amazes me how some people think that by undermining others, by not seeing others as important, it makes them more important. Really, in, in tearing down another, aren't we also undermining and tearing down ourselves? But when we see the importance in the interest of others, especially when their interests are us and our goodness and our well-being, aren't we helping ourselves in the process? And so our parents have given us guidelines because of their, where are, where their interest. But then throughout our lives, how did we respond to those guidelines? How did we respond to their interest? And so ask yourself this question, by humbling ourselves, how do we show others and our parents that they may know better than we do? Because God loves us so much that he shared his guidelines with us. In fact, his guidelines, I guess you can kind of call them the Ten Commandments, but these have been rewritten because today we begin our first Sunday of religious education with our youth. And so our youth are participating in religious education today, and they're going to be focusing on the goodness of God's guidelines, the goodness of God's guidelines. So we've taken the Ten Commandments and we've kind of helped them by putting them into a language that we hope our youth will better understand. So the first commandment, love God more than you love anything else. Don't make anything in your life more important than God. The second, always say God's name with love and respect. The third, honor the Lord by resting and going to church on Sunday. The fourth, and notice I underlined this one, love and respect your parents and all the adults who care for you in your life. That's what we're focusing on is our respect of others, our parents, our elders, is so often like our respect of God, our Father. Five, never hurt anyone through your actions and words. Six, always be faithful and respectful to yourself, your family, and your friends. Seven, don't take anything that is not yours. Eight, always tell the truth. Nine, be happy with the relationships you have. Don't be jealous of other people. Ten, be happy with the belongings you have. Don't wish for other people's things. There they are. God's guidelines based on the Ted Commandments given to us out of God's goodness, because God loves us and wants what's best for us. But we need to acknowledge of the importance of God in our lives, those guidelines, acknowledge them. But I mean, when we go through those guidelines, we need to say yes to them, but also follow through with them. We had a great story in the gospel. Jesus asked, what is your opinion? Which of the two did his father's will? We hear that in the gospel of Matthew chapter 21, verse 28 to 31. There on the left is me, and then on the right is my brother Mark. Now, let me explain something about the two of us. Um, with my brother Mark, he found that he didn't want to have to argue with my parents and, and go through all the fighting and everything. So when my parents asked my brother Mark to do something, he would promptly and energetically and enthusiastically say yes and then not go and do it. Now me, I had a mouth. And so when I was asked to do something, I would argue, I would say no, I would explain why I wasn't able to do it. But then I'd end up feeling guilty, changing my mind and going and doing it anyway. God provides us those commandments, those guidelines. We are called to sometimes struggle with them, maybe even say, you know, no, I just can't see how that applies in my life, and yet we're invited to change our mind when we recognize how important they are because of God's goodness. We are called to say yes to God, and then follow through with that commitment. Follow through with that wonderful relationship we have with God our Father. 
the relationship we have with our parents, others who care for us, and recognize the goodness of what they are hoping for us. So not, let us not so often say to our parents and others, oh, that's unfair, because I don't know about you, but my dad would frequently say back, life's unfair. But recognize that these guidelines are shared with us because of love. So let us reflect, how are we called to live, to practice, to follow, and appreciate the goodness of God's guidelines?